Hi, I'm Paul Kilgan from GK Tuition, and in this video I want to talk to you about sequences and series. Now the question that I've chosen to go through here is 2018 Paper 1, Question 5. In this question we're introduced to the sieve of Sundorum, and the sieve of Sundorum is, an, is a table of infinite arithmetic sequences. In other words, these numbers just go on forever, 4, 7, 10, 13, this just goes on forever, and every row and every column is an infinite arithmetic sequence. We're given the first four rows and the first four columns. The first part of this question asks you to find the difference between the sums of the first 45 terms in the first two rows. Okay, so it's just, it's wordy tricky. Find the difference between the sums of the first 45 terms in the first two rows. The first row being 4, 7, 10, 13, the second row being 7, 12, 17, 22. Well, in order to find the difference between their sums, the first thing I should do is actually just find what the sums are. So the, fir so what the first thing we should do is find the sum of the first 45 terms in the first row. In row number 1, the first term is 4 and the common difference is 3. To get the sum of the first 45 terms, we just sum into the formula for Sn. Sn is equal to n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d. You'll notice here I've subbed in to find S45. It just becomes 45 over 2 times 2 times 4 plus 45 minus 1 times 3. If you plug into that formula, you get 3150. So the first 45 terms in this row add up to 3150. I'm trying to find the difference between that and the second row. So now I want to find the sum of the first 45 terms in the second row. Clearly in the second row, A, the first term is 7, and D, the common difference is 5. If I plug into the same formula, in this case, the sum of the first 45 terms adds up to 5,265. Now the question was to find the difference between their sums. So to find the difference between the sums, it's just 5,265 minus 3,150. If I subtract the two of those, the difference between their sums works out as 2,115. So your final answer in that case was just 2,115. The second part of this question is a bit harder to wrap your head around. We're asked to find this, the number that is in the 60th row and the 70th column. In other words, you want to go down 60 and you want to go across 70 numbers. So the first thing you need to do here, the you need to realize the first thing I want to do is find the first term in the 60th row. In order to do that, you need to look at the first column. If you look at the first column, the first term is 4, the next one is 7, 10, 13. So clearly, A is 4, D is equal to 3. If you want to find the 60th number in this column, you need to sub into the formula for Tn, which is Tn equals A plus N minus 1 times D. This will allow you to find the 60th term. If you just plug in your values there, you end up with the 60th term in the first column is 181. Once you know that's 181, you need to get to the 70th one across. But knowing just the first term is useless to you, because you need, not, you need the first term, but you also need the common difference. In order to work out the common difference, you're going to have to work out what is the second term in, the, in this row. If you can work out the second term in this row, the difference between the first one and the second one is the common difference. So the second thing you need to do is look at column number two. If you look at column number two, you need to find the 60th term in that column. Clearly in column number two, the first term is seven and the common difference is five. So A is seven and D is equal to five. You want to find the 60th term in column number two. So you sum into the same formula as previously. We're summing into this formula and T60 in this case works out as 302. So I know that in the 60th row, the first term is 181, the second term is 302, which means A is 181, and the common difference is the difference between those two, it's 121. If you know the first term and you know the common difference, you can work out what is the 70th number across. So I can find what is the 70th number by summing into the same formula as we have done previously, and we're just looking for T70. T70 in this case is A plus N minus 1 times D. Where A is 181, your N is 70, and your D is 121. So your final answer there works out as 8,530. If you went down 60 numbers, and then you went across 70 numbers, you would end up at five ten, sorry, 8,530. Your final answer, 8,530.
Okay, then I'm going to go through the next part of the question in detail. Students seem to struggle a lot with these questions. This is what's called an iterative equation, okay? They've told you that A1 is 4, that A2 is 2. And they've given you the means of finding the next term. You can find any term if you know the previous two terms. You can find AN if you know the one that's before it and the one that's before that. In other words, I can find, the, I can find A3 because I know A2 and I know A1. Now, they've asked me to find the next six terms. For me, the most important thing here is you need to be very clear what you're subbing in for n each time. I'm going to start off by subbing in n equals 3. I told you that in the question, but obviously if you already know a1 and a2, the next one you want to find is a3. So I would, uh, you should write it out each time. You're subbing in n equals 3. If you sub in n equals 3, this becomes a3 is equal to 3 minus 1 is 2, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So that means a3 is equal to a2 minus a1. Based on that logic, I can say that a3 is equal to, and I know that a2 is 2, and I know that a1 is 4. So it becomes 2 minus 4, which means that a3, the third term in this sequence, 2 minus 4 gives me minus 2. Okay, so that's my, that's my third term. Now that I know my third term, I can find the fourth one. So now rather than subbing in n equals 3, I'm going to sub in n equals 4. I'm subbing n equals 4 into this term. If I sub in n equals 4, I get a4 is equal to a3 minus a2. So in this case, I'm looking for a4. a3, I worked it out previously. a4 is minus 2. Sorry, a3 is minus 2. And a2 is given to me in the question, it's 2. So that becomes a minus 2. Which means if I simplify this fully, a4, the fourth term in this sequence, is minus 4. So I know what a3 is, I know what a4 is, now I'm going to try and find a5. To get a5, I'm going to sub in n equals 5 into the original formula, which means that I get a5 is equal to a4 minus a3. Again, I don't know what a5 is, so at the moment I'll leave it as an unknown. a5 and a4 we worked it out previously, it's minus 4. And a3 is up here, it's minus 2. So I'm going to get minus a3, so it becomes minus, minus 2. So if I simplify that fully, I get minus 4 plus 2, which gives me minus 2. So now I've worked out a3, a4, and a5. I need to do it three more times. So I want you to make sure, don't watch the rest of this video, I want you to do the next three before you watch me do out the solution. To work out the next three values, to get a6, we sub in n equals 6, and we use a6 is a5 minus a4 works out as 2. a7 is a6 minus a5 and it works out as 4. a8 is a7 minus a6 and it works out as 2. Now that you've, so they asked you to find the next six terms and we're after doing this. So now we have eight terms in total. The first one was 4, 2, then minus 2, minus 4, minus 2, 2, 4, 2. You need to recognize that this pattern repeats itself every six numbers. The first, the six numbers are 4, 2, minus 2, minus 4, minus 2, and 2. And then it's just going to repeat itself again and again and again. Now, you can use that information to find what number, what will the number, the 2019th number in this sequence be. First of all, you should work out, well, how many complete revolutions will, how many times will these six numbers have repeated themselves between, two, between 0 and 2019? The closest number that will divide into 2019 is two, that 6 will divide into is 2016. If you get 2016 and you divide it by 6, you'll get 336. Which means that these six numbers will repeat themselves 336 times between 0 and 2019. So if it's repeated itself 336 times, that means that the 2017th number it will, at 2017, it will start again. So the 2017th number will be 4. The 2018th number will be a 2. And then that means that the 2019th number will be minus 2. So you can just use that logic, and you can say that the 2019th number is going to be minus 2. And that's your final answer for A2019. So I hope this video makes sense. Um, if there's anything you're unsure of there or you want me to clarify something, just let me know in class or send me an email and I'll try and explain it differently.